Hello, and welcome back. I'm just starting out a new series, and this is really more of a thought experiment than a playthrough. Um, what I wanted to do is have a go at seeing if I could build a 10k megabase. Totally in vanilla. Well, I say totally in vanilla. Um, I have a bunch of mods installed. So, alien biomes, which doesn't really affect gameplay. Um, helicopters, uh, Mark III suits. Um, I've got creative mode in, which I'm going to be using at the moment for designing some stuff. Um, and then various uh, designing quality of life type things. So uh, the Helmod Planner. Right, this one I'm having a bit of trouble with. So let's see if we can fix it. Options, mod settings. If we go to the per player, um, these display width factors don't seem to work for me. Um, so let's try those. That's better. It now fits. Um, so it seems like those numbers are not adjusted by the um, display scale setting. Uh, so I, I'm on a 4K display, so I make the UI components bigger. It looks like this then makes the whole Helmod UI even bigger. So I have to dial back the size to fit it on the screen. Anyway, so we've got this. Then to double check this, we have upgrade planner, creative mode. Oh, I thought I had, I have bottleneck installed. I thought I had max rate calculator. Um, perhaps I don't have that. Perhaps I need to install that. Anyway, we will find out in a minute. Oh, I do have the max rate tool. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so uh, we're in a creative mode playthrough at the moment. So we can instantly blueprint and instantly destroy things. The other thing is I've set up the world with no biters, no pollution, and with water only in the starting area. Although I'm damned if I can find the water in the starting area. Oh, there it is. There's the water in the starting area. Okay. Um, and what we're going to do today is start to look at how one would design a um, 10k a second red potion build. Now, in my previous Megabase playthrough, the design philosophy was to have dedicated build areas for each step in the process. So we had a smelting area, green circuits area, red circuits, and so on and so on and so on. What I'd like to do this time um, the problem with that was some of these build areas got quite big, particularly the ones at the beginning of the production chain. And because they got quite big, there was quite a lot of contention on the rail network around there. And also, um, you get a lot of compression on the items. So ore comes in, it stacks only up to 50. So you fill up lots of train carriages with that. It smelts down to, into stacks of 100. You get a bit of uh, productivity bonus, so a 20% bonus on that. But for ev roughly every two train carriages of all that comes in, 1.2 train carriages of plates go out. So that's a good compression. You take big trains and you can send out small trains, or you can send in lots of trains and take out roughly half those number of trains. That's a good compression. Then if you make gears, that's another half compression plus bonuses. Um, you make circuits. So for um, circuits, I can't remember exactly what the ratio is, but basically you take in a copper plate, an iron plate, and you produce a green circuit. So that's a two to one compression. There are some bonuses there again. Um, so at each step in the chain, particularly once you get up to things like red and blue circuits, um, you're putting in lots of material and taking out a small amount of material. And you actually reach the point quite quickly where you have to ask yourself, why are we even shipping this material around? Because We've put in loads of items, then loaded them onto trains and shipped them somewhere. That's a lot of shipping. It's a lot of inserter arms. And then eventually they get compressed right down to one or two items, like electric engines, right? So you, you put a ton of material in and you get out an electric engine. Um, so what I'm thinking with this playthrough is I'd really like to keep the transport down as low as possible. 
So this is going to be another playthrough where I use trains and bots. So I'm not going to use belts. But I would like the bills to be as much as possible taking advantage of compression and avoiding shipping things with trains where that's not necessary. So I'm going to try and build things to have multiple steps of production on one site. Having said that, we're building to a scale of 10k, which is a substantial size. Um, so we may find out that this isn't practical. Anyway, it's going to be entertaining finding out. We're in alien biomes, and at the moment I think we're in the white snow type area. Um, so it's not your eyes that have gone weird. Um, it's that this genuinely is the color scheme. Right, let's get a night vision goggles just in case. Okay, and I haven't even really began to pimp this out because we're going to be doing most of our work with blueprints. Um, but anyway, all right, so let's start off. Red. So I would like to add a recipe. Red science. Cool. Now, I had a bit of play around with this earlier and got really confused by the UI. I want to produce 10K. Whoops, 10,000. Okay, except this is set to 10,000 a second. I may have to sneeze. <coughs> Forgive me. Um, <clears throat> all right, so it's set to 10,000 a second. This, I think, is 10,000 a minute. I, I went away and did the sums in a calculator, and this looked sensible for one minute. Okay. So if we did this in tier three assemblers with no modules, no beacons, we'd be looking at 667 assemblers. That's not happening. Okay, so modules. And uh, from the last playthrough, I pretty much convinced myself for definite that what you want is 12 module setups. So I, I see the point during gameplay as you're building up step by step in a scale for having assemblers, then having assemblers with prod mods, then uh, a four beacon, you know, a strip of beacons by the side that gives you four each, then a strip above and below that gives you eight. But really by the time you're getting towards end game, you should be looking at 12 beacon builds. Um, they have the fewest active entities and you're keeping your, your entities running the whole time. So it's just, it's the most polite way to treat the game um, and the builds are slightly smaller depending on how you measure small um, and for bot builds um, having fewer boxes with the fewer assemblers that are working harder I, I think that's nice to it so I'm going to be working on 12 beacon builds wherever it is possible to make a 12 beacon build there's a couple of special cases where it's tricky like with green circuits um, but we're going to do our best Okay, so if we just put prob mods in, we're up to 1,191 machines. Um, but we're going to add speed modules. And we are going to have 12 beacons affecting one machine. And this says we need 75 assemblers. Um, I'm not quite sure where it's getting this from. It says assemblers per beacon, 1.2. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure how it's managed to do this. So I may have to go back and fix that number later. Um, anyway, so let's see if this is the right build. So we will sketch this out without any thought for how it's actually going to work and use max rate calculator and see if this works, basically. So I think, as I said before, I've never managed to make Helmod work before because I've always run into problems with the UI. So this is a bit of a learning experience for me. Here we are. Um, right, stack of those, stack of those, stack of those. Great, and um, we're going to use the compact beacon setup.
Okay. I'll put some legs in this suit. I think that's too many legs. Let's take this out. You need some legs because life is short, but too many means you can't actually get things done. Great. That's all in. And uh, this particular beacon setup um, is best powered with small poles. I like to place them like that, unless there's a, a reason why that's impossible. Um, and then we will set up the boxes just because. Okay, so we're going to provide here. We're going to request here. There. Okay. So this is a module. Um, and All right, let's get the power down. Good. So now that we've got power, I can copy paste that. So this is requesting 48 of each of the gears and the copper. Okay. And let's ask how efficiently this works. Okay. So this has an input of 96 of each per minute an output of 134 a minute. Okay, so we are... Okay, um, so we're looking for 10K. Right, let's get rid of that. That's gonna be annoying. Okay, and it reckoned I needed 70 odd. Okay, that's eight. Um, how many did it say I need? Uh, 75. Um, right, 75 divides into 15, doesn't it? So, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, 10, 11. 12, 13, 14, 15. Great. Um, right, let's make a new blueprint because I want to see, keep the singleton for later. So that's 15, 30, 45. Sixty, seventy-five. That doesn't look too big, right? Let's max rate that. And max rate says it's just over ten k. And if max rate says it, I believe it. So this is our red science build, and I've done it like this because uh, those of you who have seen me do these kind of playthroughs before. Um, the way I tend to design this stuff is to have rail coming in the middle. Um, all right, let's get some rail just to illustrate. Okay, so the rail tracks would go somewhere here. Like that. Ah, not like that. But anyway, you get the basic idea. Um, then we put um, some of these down the middle. Uh, and then depending upon the size of the build, we might want some of the other side as well. Okay, so this is, I think, uh, let's join all this up. I'm just doing this to get rid of flashing lights. Um, right, so this is our red, red build. This is the size we need for it. So that doesn't 
in itself look ridiculous. Now I am aware that the red build is the smallest build. Um, the rockets are going to be almost half the size of the whole of the rest of the science build. So yeah. Um, all right. So what's the next thing? The next thing would be iron gears. Okay. Now again, the iron gears, we are going to prod mod and we are going to speed mod. Awesome. So we need, on this way of doing it, six gear machines. That's without putting speed modules into the machines. Um, now that may be a sensible way to do it. We may decide that we want to put some speed modules in to reduce that number. Um, I need to find the right key press for that. Okay, so let's build a little... Um, This is going to become a bit of a parts list, basically. Okay, now this is going to be changed to gears. There we are. And from memory, I need two input boxes to make gears work. Yeah, inputs is 1.1 stack inserters. Now the problem with this is then where do you put the power poles? So we will start off by... Oh, I don't have Picker Extended installed. How frustrating. Okay, so how do we get power to this? Well, the easiest way is to shift the whole of this up. So let's take this, take it out. There. Because then you can stick a substation in. Uh, and where are the substations? Where are the substations? There. Okay. Right. Let's give this its own power. Brilliant. Um, so we reckon we need six of these. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, let's max rate this. item per minute. Okay, so it takes an 11K, 11 k, 11.5K of plates, it produces 8K of gears, and we need 7.7K of gears, and 10K of plates. So what these machines will be idling a bit, which I don't particularly like. And if we took one out, this is 672. And we, sorry, let's just go back. We're looking for 7143. Okay, so if we put a single speed module into each one, where would we be? Oh, we can't because it's prop mods. Okay. Um, okay, well, the other option, actually, would be this. You'll see why, where I'm going with this in a moment. Right, that's obviously worse. Um... Let's see what this says. 
So that's eight, seven. Eight, fifty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven machines. Eight thirty. Sorry, eight three hundred. Eight one hundred. Seven nine three six. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven machines. This says we need six if they're fully beaconed. Okay. I'm because what I'm wondering is. We could potentially put substations in these gaps, if you see what I mean. Um, Seven one nineteen. Seven one forty three is what we need. So one more of those will take us over what we need. Yeah. Okay, and because we've moved the substations down, we can now grab the whole of the top of this. Right, cut those out and put them back. Great. Um, so that isn't horrendous. At least I don't think it's horrendous. Uh, let's see if we can move all these into the build rather than having them dangling over the edge. Okay, so that one goes there. That one would then go there. Okay, let's see if we can put back speed beacons to get the speed back. How many beacons did I take out? Probably that many. Okay, so I think that's fine. Right, so there's method in the madness because uh, this is gonna be embedded within a larger build and the larger build is likely to be close packed. Okay, so this, sorry, this requires plates. And according to the planner, I need 10,205 plates. And if I did this with smelters, I'd need 298, except we are going to add beacons. And 12 modules and this needs 38 which is a manageable number okay um, and I happen to know from past experience that 11 smelters um, three deep on both sides of a rover port you can pack that around four rubber ports in the middle and everything works. Um, so we'll see if we can build something a bit like that. Don't need that. I like that one. This whole thing seems to be a unit. Right, so let's grab this. Right, we are going to put 
put this down, except this is going to become a smelter. We'll actually have to put a smelter in to turn it into a smelter. There we are. Yep. Um, it needs powering. Okay. And okay. That there. Is that no? Let's take a pole out here. There. Okay, so um, 38, I think, was the number. Yeah. Right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven, twenty two. 33. Okay. 1, uh, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37. This is the 37th one. I need 38. So 34, 35, 36, 37, 38. So this one. Can go. Except, have we managed to accidentally make this add up correctly? So we have one, two, three, four, five, six additional machines here. Knock me sideways. This fits. All right, I'm going to put it down here just so the bills don't overlap perfectly. But this gear build is exactly the right size to make up a row for the smelters, which is extremely cool. Okay, so this can go away. So remember what I was saying earlier about compression. We can manage to compress all this smelting down into gears through these machines. And then we would only need to take out through a train or whatever mechanism the gears to feed into this. Okay, um, I think I'm going to leave this here. Next time we will get back, we will look at the copper smelting, and then we'll look at how we can assemble these builds together to give us a single build. Maybe on a single site, maybe join together with trains, I don't know. Um, yeah, this is sort of coming together nicely, isn't it? So um, I'm going to leave it there. Thanks very much for watching. Like, subscribe, tell your friends. And together we will build a 10K Factorio factory in creative mode and get this thing running nicely. All right, bye-bye.